Okay, so I'm back with another little piece of Cold War memorabilia or technology or whatever you want to call it. This is the DP66M. It's a Polish uh, military Geiger counter. And for you eagle eye viewers out there, you might see that this uh, uh, meter range here is actually from the civilian model. It's from the DP66. Uh, reason for that is that I bought actually one of each. Uh, the civilian version I got was, it has a little bit of a different probe, it has the same tubes in it, but uh, it has a little bit of a different design. Uh, but what I understood was that uh, the one I put, I picked the civilian one apart and it turned out it was completely gutted. Almost every single one of the wires were cut or in any way, it was just a right old mess, and the selector on the civilian model was also complete. It was just a piece of, it was a paperweight. And then I bought this instead, which is the military version uh, from the store. I might put the link in the description. It was the same store I got my night vision headset from. Yeah, but anyway, that piece actually seemed to work, but I actually picked some parts from the civilian version and put it in this military version and it actually works. Mind you, I need to might have this uh, calibrated with the adjustment is need uh, this screw protector. Uh, but anyway, what I did was that the battery compartment from the military original was actually burnt out. So I actually took apart the lower receiver of the civilian version and put it on this because it's basically the same it's the same when I did that it uh, the unit was actually powered on uh, but the meter didn't work so what I did was that I used a multimeter and managed to check that the one from the civilian version actually worked and the one from the military uh, version was actually burned out so a few minutes with a screwdriver and a soldering iron and I managed to change it to this one <clears throat> so now I have it, it worked completely. Uh, the way I knew that it worked, but th this old one was fried on this military version, was because on the side here, see this little connector, uh, it goes to this earpiece. So this is where you actually hear the clicking noise. Anyway, this little thing, two prong connector is actually attached here. It's a little bit hard to see, but that's it. So now you have the earpiece connected. I'm gonna do a little like this, I believe, so you might see. Yeah, and here is the, here is the probe. Uh, it basically, comes like as I understood and this probe actually both picks up the beta rays and gamma rays it doesn't pick up alpha rays but it has uh, apparently a very interesting three what should we call it a, a three probe connector in it so there are actually three probes in it for beta and gamma and like this it it's shielded so it's supposed to shield from beta rays so it will only pick up gamma and if you screw this such, it's a sp spring up it's here. Uh, you get this, so you can see the uh, the tube inside here, and it's a bit of protective film over it. Now it will pick up both gamma and beta rays with this here. Yeah. And if you look at this uh, ca leather case, it comes in, in up here. Uh, the original check source was supposed to uh, be located, but when these were demilitarized and put out in the civilian second-hand market, uh, they took them away. But anyway, it works. We're going to see it a little bit now in action. Uh, as I understood on the internet by reading a little bit about this, and I managed to find a PDF of the instruction manual, someone had translated it to English. Under this little cover here, you see there is a little 
hole here. This, I've understood, is for the personal dosage meters that personnel was supposed to carry around. There is actually a light bulb at the bottom of this, internally. What I've understood is that uh, when you were out in the field and checking for radiation, you also carried not just this piece of equipment, but also a, a personal rungeon dosage meter that looked like a, a silver pen, type, a silver stick pen type deal. Yeah. And what you did was that you actually put it down here and it would illuminate through the pen and by a small peephole you could actually see the approximate dose that you had acquired during the day. Uh, I believe maybe, and this is just me speculating, I know that these uh, personal me dosage meters were supposed to be rechargeable by a small dynamo charge station, but I believe maybe this these two, this is a potentiometer that I don't really know what it, but I believe my, maybe these two have something to do with each other that you charge your personal dosage meter with this system as well. You can both check your personal dose and you can also charge it. That's my hypothesis. If someone knows out there in YouTube land, please leave me a comment. Please leave a, leave a comment down below, please. Yep, but anyway, uh, then we have these two other bu buttons here, rubberized buttons. It's actually that this here is a backlighting for the meter itself. Yeah, backlight. And this window itself on the meter is actually uh, painted with luminous paint, not radiological, by the way. So there is no... What was it? Uh, no ra It's not a radium-based paint on this. It's uh, one of those that you just have to shine a light on it and it will illuminate. This here, what it says KAS, it's actually a zeroing for the meter needle. So if this will go completely off to the side, uh, you can quickly zero it with this button there. Yeah, and then you have the range control here. Um, the W is off, and here, when you put it to K, it's actually the battery check. I know, I know it's a little bit uh, faded on this particular, but if it's between about uh, 40 and uh, 180 on the meter scale, it's a good battery. There is a little bit of a faded r red line there with a K. It means that if it is between that range, it, the battery is good. And now, if I turn it to the weakest setting, you might be able to hear. I'm gonna put this up to the camera mic. And this is just background radiation. It's on the lowest setting, so it will only pick up background radiation. Now I'm going to do a little bit of an experiment. We're going to... Okay. So here's the probe. And you might be able to see a little bit of the window there. But you will hear the clicking. I don't have a check source, but when I went through some old boxes, I found some old family heirlooms. Namely, these three old clocks. And these are, you know, painted with radio aluminous paint, apparently, because and you can see this is hard over, and now it go back. I can just so as you can see. Yeah. So, if we look at this one, a little bit of a smaller. Yep. 
we're going to put it up one step to five, five times millirunchen hours. Yep, but finally, this one here, this watch, this is the daddy. Have a look at this. The needle is hard over, so I'm going to put it back and we'll put it on the 5 setting. And it's almost hard over. So it shows about 500 millirunchen hours. Even this goes almost hard over. So we actually have to put it up one step more. Such, 50. In theory, this should go up to 10 now, and it does. See here, it goes up to 10 on the... We have a 50 here, and we have a 10 here. So, 50 times 10, so apparently this goes up to 500 millirunchen hours. So anyway, the, this is a fun machine to use actually. It's an old school, since the date code down here says 1971. But even though it's this is old 70s technology, it still works. It still works quite well actually. So the cool factor on this is quite high in my opinion. And this is completely analog technology. If you open one of these up, you won't say anything, any type of uh, IC circuits. Everything here is uh, PC board and, uh, you know, it's really old school analog technology and it's pretty badass in my opinion. Thank you.